welcome to the Chasing Spirituality podcast. I'm your host, Megan, and I'm so excited that you're joining me today. Each episode is full of heartfelt and expansive content that will really help you expand your consciousness and grow as a person. I created this podcast because I wanted to share my own personal experiences on my spiritual journey, but I also wanted to meet others and have them share what they've been through, and how they've gotten to where they are today. If you haven't done so already, it would really mean a lot to me if you could rate and review the podcast. This really helps the podcast grow and reach more people, but it also allows me to get more guests on the show. Now on to today's topic. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of the common stories and themes and just ideas that we commonly come up with it's things that society has made normal things that have been passed on from our parents and from their parents and from just peer pressure and society and culture and i really just want to talk about some of the the big things like some of the big things that i see and that i often counsel people on or I just may even have these things come up in my own life on my own journey and I wanted to just kind of talk about it and shed some light on you know how this can really damage and affect uh, our living and our overall health so first um, I guess the best way to approach it is I want to talk about women's health and in particular let's talk about our weight and our image around our weight. There are so many women, in fact I would say probably over 75% of women especially in American culture that have so much pressure on their appearance and the way that they look and a lot of it has to do with their weight or their body size. And I know that a lot of people are instantly and immediately going to think about women who may have a lot of curves, who may consider um, themselves to be uh, thick or using words like chubby and then definitely like the F word that I absolutely hate, 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 hate. So I'll probably only use it this one time and that will be fat. Um, But this also pertains to women who feel like they're too lean, that they're too thin, that they don't have enough curves. Um, Because I think the image that we, that we want to achieve or the ideas that we have around the way that we look, it, isn't an overweight issue it isn't an issue with being too big um and in fact it's not even an issue of being too thin it's an issue of us not feeling confident and worthy in our own bodies and in our own skin and this happens for many different reasons so i want to kind of talk about some of them if you look at um i guess the when uh, social media and all kinds of different types of media like magazines and television and movies and all of these things started to first kind of uh, become mainstream. Um, this, women were idolized. They were sexualized from the beginning. Um, and this has obviously evolved and this has changed over time. But women have always been objectified. And that has always caused this uh, game of comparison. Where we see these beautiful women who men are just completely fawning over. And we think that we have to look like that. That we have to be that way. That we need to attract a partner by looking absolutely perfect and then that evolved over time where women 
became smaller and smaller and thinner and thinner and then it evolved into well you can't just be thin you also have to have big boobs and a nice ass and you have to wear um a particular type of clothes and you have to get all dolled up and wear red lipstick and have false eyelashes and have to have long luscious locks and I mean it's just evolved over time basically um but you get the idea you get where I'm going with this about how there's definitely this um persona out there that women feel like they have to meet in order to be successful in order to be worthy we place all of our worth in the way that we look in our appearance and if we don't feel like we look the way that actresses look the way that musicians look the way that models look the way that people look that are around us the way that our sisters look the way that our friends look then we instantly go into this self hatred mode where we're not enough we are not worthy and we're not worthy of love because we do not look what we believe perfect should look like now if you look at this in comparison to men okay men have not had this kind of um this kind of pressure on them like women have now i will say that within the last you know maybe the last decade this has this has started to change and there has been a lot more pressure on on men and the way that they're supposed to look and you know having certain um physiques and and muscles and certain stature and st certain heights and you know this has definitely begun to change but this again is something that has only recently started to shift and then again if you really look at it if you really look at the types of men and the way that men are depicted in a sexual manner as far as like what they look like on tv and in movies and in magazines and stuff it's still not even a woman's fantasy this is something that um was going on around on tiktok and i actually listened to um a podcast that that touched on it a little bit um but it really fascinated me. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, so most of the um, the way that men are depicted um, and sexualized is not even truly like the feminine's perspective. And um, I just mean like someone who is attracted to men. This is not from that perspective. This is from another man who is attracted to women women's perspective and um if you think about it a lot of times um the way that men are sexualized it's all about having big bulging bulky muscles and being super strong and being able to lift and do all these things which yeah sure that's great nothing wrong with having a nice body nothing wrong with having some big old muscles but if you ask majority of people that are actually attracted to the masculine what actually gets their juices flowing and like what they really think is sexy it ain't all that like some sure and some may even say like yeah it's nice or it's a bonus but there's a lot of people out there that like no nah, like i want to see him like getting things done you know like i want to see him you know being action oriented i want to see him you know using his muscles and his brain i want to see him you know planning i want to see him building things i want to see him putting things together with his hands women find that attractive the feminine find that aspect of the masculine attractive i know so many people that are attracted to the masculine that don't want a super buff skinny guy okay like they don't even care about the physique they just want him to accurately represent what the masculine energy is supposed to and that's all about protecting 
but it's also about guiding. It's always a, it's also it's mainly about making the feminine feel safe so that she can enter a flow state. It's not about being super aggressive and lifting weights every day. So again, that persona is not even from the feminine perspective. It is literally from the wounded masculine perspective, not even the healed masculine perspective, but the wounded. And I have two episodes already on the podcast where I go deeper into what the feminine is and what the masculine is and how they're different. And this has absolutely nothing to do with gender and what is between your legs. So go ahead and get that out of your head. If you haven't listened to those episodes, I recommend that you go back and listen to them because that is just completely bullshit. We are all both parts masculine and feminine and it has nothing to do with that, okay? But the wounded masculine is a real thing and the wounded masculine is what is running society and what has been running society for for ever, really. Um so women have been sexualized also from the wounded masculine perspective. And I want to challenge you to find a healed man, to find a man that is not in his wounded masculine, but is actually healed and ask him what he looks for in a woman, what he looks for in a partner, what he looks for in a feminine companion if he is the masculine counterpart. Okay. And I bet that nothing that he says is going to have anything to do with your size, okay? It's not going to have anything to do with your weight. It's going to be more about your personality. It's going to be more about your traits. It's going to be more about the person who you truly are on the inside. And yet, we put in place so much worth on this temporary body, that isn't even going to follow us into the next life or the next life. Our bodies are, are temporary. Your soul lives on forever. And when your soul decides to reincarnate and you come back, I promise you, you're not going to be in the same body. Your body's not going to matter. You may not even have the same um, gen- gender parts. You may not be thin. You may not be large. You may not be the same nationality because those things are they're irrelevant so we have these these beliefs these limiting beliefs and these ideas that have literally just been part of our programming they're not real they don't really exist we are what gives them power we are what makes them relevant and what make them exist so I want you to look at what kind of pressure has been around you growing up. What kind of beliefs do your parents have or do your caregivers have? Your grandparents, your sisters, um, your hometown, your partners that you've had intimate relationships with. Um, what do some of the, these people around you, what have they believed? What kind of things have they said? And... If you really think about it, you'll start to notice where some of these patterns and some of these beliefs have come from. If you had a mom who was always on a diet, always trying to be a size 2 or a size 4, always was trying to eat like a bird, was always making a big deal about her own weight, even if she never body shamed you ever, you picked up on that. And you begin to think that, well, then there must be something wrong with my weight. Then I need to diet too. Then I need to be smaller as well. Even if you're already small, you can still have these beliefs. I know so many people who are a great size. I mean, they're the perfect size for who, who they are. For, you know, they're the perfect size for what is meant to what is meant for them. And yet, They're so self-conscious. They feel too small or too big. And it's not because they are too small or too big. 
It's because of the beliefs of the people that they were around growing up. If you had a father that was constantly, you know, working out and trying to be as big and bad and tough as possible, then that could make you feel like you need to to be the same. That you need to constantly work out and be as big and bad as possible. Um, if you grew up watching a lot of movies where it was just that time where women were really ridiculed for their size. I mean, I remember in the 90s, like, you couldn't be a size 6 and not be made fun of. A size 6 is nowhere near anything close to being overweight. And I I have noticed that this is starting to change, you know, like, we're definitely being more accepting of different sizes and um, of women and just people in general being different and looking different. And that's beautiful and that's wonderful. But I also feel like we still hold some of these beliefs true. And it really comes down to what you were exposed to growing up, what, what you were around and what felt normal to you. You know, if, if there was a lot of pressure on you to, you know, diet or only eat certain foods so that you could be a certain size, you know, even if you don't believe that you absorbed it, your subconscious did. And if now you have problems with your self-worth and, you know, insecurities, that's why. And so my advice to you is to look at it from a a different perspective, okay? Think about someone that is your size or close to your size. And what would you say to them? Would you call them a disgusting name that I'm not even going to say again? Would you make fun of them because they were too big or too small? Or would you tell them that they're beautiful that the way that they are? And if you're listening to this podcast, I'm hoping that that's what you would say to them. Because you wouldn't judge them for their size. Because you know who they are on the inside. You know that they've got a big, bright, shining personality And that they're a beautiful person no matter what they look like on the outside. And that's what's important because that's what's going to carry with you. Because you're going to lose your looks at some point anyways. Later in life when you start to age and you get older and you start to get wrinkles and your metabolism definitely starts to crap out. You're not going to give a damn about what you weigh. And you shouldn't. And another thing that I want to bring into conversation so that you can see this from a higher lens is this is what I say to myself when I'm feeling insecure and when I'm feeling, um, you know, just my self-worth is not not good. I'm just not having a good day because we all have them. I tell myself in 20 or 20, 30, maybe even 10, 15 years from now, am I going to look back on these moments that I'm in right now? And am I, and am I, am I going to say, dang, that diet was just lit. I was having such a great time starving myself and beating myself up for eating that cookie and I'm so glad that I got down to my ideal size so you know that I could feel good or am I gonna say wow that was such a great experience that I had when we had a lazy day and just 
snuggled up on the couch and watched movies and ate popcorn. And when we went out to dinner that time and we got that big banana split. Like, what am I going to be thinking about in 30 years? Am I going to be thinking about the diets? Am I going to be thinking about all the times that I deprived myself, that I told myself no just so that I could fit into a pair of jeans? Or am I going to look back on the good times, the times that I let myself have that cookie, the times that, you know, I felt good because I was having fun? I'm, I don't know about you, but I think in 30 years, that's what I'm going to be thinking about. And I'm not saying that you should completely throw your health out the window. Like there's a difference in balance and being healthy and making healthier choices and just completely depriving yourself and never letting yourself indulge and never letting yourself have, you know, have what you, what you desire. Because yes, we are spiritual beings. We are spirit, but we are also human beings And human beings are meant to experience these things. We're meant to stay up till 2 a.m. and have crappy Taco Bell if, you know, if it's in the moment. And I know that in years and years and years from now, it's moments like that that we're going to remember. We're not going to remember and be grateful for the times that we were too hard on ourselves because of the way that we looked and I know that there was this um there was this segment that Oprah did where she took a bunch of women that were like in their 40s and their 50s and their 60s and she asked them you know she asked like the women in their 60s what advice would you know would they give their 40 year old selves Or what did they wish that they knew when they were 40? And all of them said, you know, I wish that I would have just loved myself for who I was then. I wish I would have just embraced my body, embraced where I was, embraced who I was. Because we're not going to care about all that other stuff. It's just simply programming that we've got to... We've got to shuffle. We got to shuffle out of it. We got to let it go. We got to say, hey, the only thing that determines my worth is who I am right now in this moment. It has nothing to do with the way I look, it has nothing to do with my body. It has to do with my soul. And I'll come back in a different body. And maybe one day I'll come back in a hotter body if you don't feel like you're hot. But I promise you that there is someone out there that thinks that you are fine, okay? Most of the time, we are so much harder on ourselves than other people would be. And just think about that for a minute, too. Like, think about people that you know that just have tremendous amounts of self-doubt and insecurities And you're probably looking at them like, why? Like, you're gorgeous. You're beautiful. You're sexy. You, you're, you're just perfect the way that you are. And hell, you may have told them that. And they may have told you that. But we don't believe it because it's our limiting belief. It's not theirs. So if you really want to start feeling good about yourself and you want to feel empowered and you want to feel sexy, You got to let go of those limiting beliefs because they're not real. They're false. They're lies. You just got to let them go. No one's going to do it for you. There is no person out there who can ever love you enough to make you love yourself. The only person that can make you feel loved and wanted and desired and sexy is you. This is for anyone who resonates with this podcast and is interested in more spiritual content. Have you checked out the Chasing Spirituality community? Well, you can find out more on my website, ChasingSpirituality.com. But this community 
is a wonderful place for you to meet like-minded people, but also be supported in your own authentic expression as you go on your spiritual journey and you learn more about fascinating topics as well as exercise your own spiritual and intuitive gifts. We have lives every single month. There's meditation videos and courses and tons of extra bonus content and videos. So if you're interested in more content, please go check that out. We would love to have you.